The kind of revolution that the world needs is a Christian revolution. If you want a miracle, you've got to expect it to happen. You are the recipients of God's grace and God's blessings, and you rejoice in that reality. Welcome to Life Today Live. Great to have you here today. I have a question. Do you ever feel bound by things? Do you feel kind of in in a, a prison, an emotional, spiritual, mental prison? Well, we are designed to live free. We are promised freedom, but you know what happens when those jail cell doors open up, you got to walk out. <laughs> you know, you, you have the choice to stay there or to walk out. Well, what does it look like to walk out? We're going to talk about some of those things. We are going to give you, as the title of a new book says, Permission to Live Free. Uh, it, it's the life that God's created all of us for. And today's guest is Dr. Jackie Green. And I will say something real quick that, that she didn't ask me to say this is this is me inserting my uh, view into this as i'm reading through this i notice that we do what we tend to do in the church which is to put women ministering to women i'm looking at this going this is true for all of us all of us guys we can learn something from dr jackie green today if we would just accept her as a sister in christ and a teacher and well, she is a co-pastor. Jackie is a co-pastor. Her and her husband, Travis Green, who, by the way, is a Grammy-nominated recording artist. They uh, co-pastor Forward City Church in Columbia, South Carolina. Jackie also hosts the Permission Talk podcast, and I'm glad to have her. Jackie, welcome to Life Today Live. Thank you for having me, Randy. It's a pleasure. So is, is that a fair assessment to say that these these principles aren't just for women. <laughs> They're for everybody. All of my spiritual sons are literally always saying permission is for men as well as women. So I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. All right. Well, everybody listen up because we're going to we're going to give you permission today. And Jackie, for those who aren't familiar with your ministry, the permission talk and the conferences, what is this whole idea of permission that you're pursuing? So I say this um, by definition in the book because I feel like it kind of gives a concise idea around permission. I think many of us understand that we're special, but we don't really understand in fullness this precision and this fullness that God invites us into in terms of owning and believing the truth of what God has said about us. And so I say the woman or man lives with permission when they become precisely and fully who God created them to be. I believe many times we grab parts of who we are and we'll own like, yes, I'm creative or I'm intellectual, but we will leave off the table that we're also committed. And I believe that it's this full coming together of owning, not critiquing, not uh, doubting, uh, not pushing away the fullness of who God has said you are, but really wrapping your hands around it and cultivating the beauty of who you see it is when you're at the point of owning permission. Oh, love it. What's the difference do you think between the promise uh, and the, and the permission? Because, you know, we can't do it ourselves, right? But it seems like there is a little bit of a responsibility on our part to do something. Mm -hmm. I really believe, you know, that whole idea of faith without works being dead or even mm -hmm. God giving us understanding of what promise is. But generally with every promise, there's conditions. He says, if you love me with all your heart, like he he often gives these prerequisites to be able to get the fulfillment of what he says inside, inside of the, the promise he gives. I believe oftentimes we don't partner. Mm -hmm. There's such a invitation to partnership where God is like, hey, girl, believe what I said about you. This is there's this truth that I said, son, there's this truth that I said about you that so often we will continue to contend and say, that's not me, or I don't feel comfortable owning that part of myself. And God is continuing to woo us out of the jail cell, like you talked mm -hmm. about, to walk out of these doors that have now been open into this marvelous light or this abundant light that he talks about that many times we leave on the table for no reason because we don't want to, you know, make somebody feel uh, uncomfortable. We people please or because of the trauma of our past. I think there are lots of things that get in the way of us totally owning rather than um pushing it away yeah yeah you know i, I could point to lots of scriptures and james it says you know draw near to me god and i will draw near to you well, we can't force god to come to us but he's offering that but there is something on our own, right. you know, our own side like resist the devil and he will flee from you we we can't it will submit to god and resist <laughs> the devil and, and he will flee we can't make the devil flee but God promises mm -hmm. that when we submit to him and resist, he will do the rest of it. So, yeah, there is a there is a big 
partnership. I just it's just the way I think you know that's the way God wants it to be. And the beauty is, though we can't do things that we can't do, He comes alongside of us to do the things we can't do when we come alongside of Him. So there's this, this kind of tension between what we can and can't do. You you have seven signs of someone who is not living with permission in the book. I'd love for you to walk us through uh, you know, a few of those just so maybe we can see practically how it looks and, and what we can actually do to you know, grasp onto what God's promised us. I talk about in those seven signs, one that I really love, and I think one is settling for less than. Um, I feel like many times you will find yourself at a position where you're not living fully in permission when you will settle for good rather than great. You settle mm-hmm. for just good enough. And I think many times we find that in the job that we gain, um, that we end up living out for 40 years, knowing that God has called us to do something else, but we are afraid to go after this fullness that God has talked about. And so rather than living the comfortability of maybe something that I now am good at, we stay at good, not knowing that maybe I know I, I actually read in your bio, he was called you and not to say that you being inside of a pulpit wasn't good but this podcast had a different layer of adding the fullness of what he had to say in this particular season for your life and i believe that you find the fullness of randy not just settling for you know okay god i've done this for so long and not being willing to venture out another thing i will say is another one of those tenets that i have found in my own life particularly many times we will say I'm not this person or because we have adopted this identity that is outside the realm of the mirror of our creator. So I'll say the sign is people that don't prioritize personal relationship with the Lord. You don't really know who you are. Or I would say in my own life, I have seen, I didn't really know who I was until I really knew who I'm, who made me. As I started to prioritize personal relationship with the Lord and get to know him and his characteristics, knowing that I was supposed to be made in his image and his likeness, I got to find, I came to find out that many of the things that I was saying was not who I was, was in truth who I was, but I was pushing it off because culture said that that's not how a woman should be built. I shouldn't be uh, confident in myself. And so in times where I felt like, no, I should have authority, I should have dominion, I would push that away feeling as if that was off limits for me because culture would say that only could be looked at in a bad way. When I came to recognize that God actually made me to actually dominate in the areas and arenas that he called me to when I was doing it with him. And so I think that those just are two of the two really big signs that were really telltale for me as I walked through life. Am I settling for just what's comfortable or what I know or what I feel out of, you know, like this poverty mindset is only the thing that I'm worthy of because of me not really believing in the fullness of what God has said that I could have in permission. Yeah, you're touching on a really important subject, especially in our culture today, uh, and that's the idea of identity. Uh, Listening to the culture, you know, uh, and... It's interesting because there are, especially in the United States, so many cultural backgrounds uh, and ethnic backgrounds, but yet mm-hmm. there seems to be a commonality of, you know, this pressure in whatever culture we're in. Oh. And, and that's, it's not, not always consistent with what God says. As you minister, how, how much do you see of this cultural oh. pressure where you a lot of it, yeah. How, yes. How, yeah. How, how how do we deal with that? I really feel like you have to get to the place where, and I say this, and I want this to be a balanced statement, where you have to get to an audience of one, where you have to find out the real priority for your life. Mm-hmm. That's not to say, I mean, you know, you become all things to all means, sure, but that is in the context of you first living your life to above all else prioritize him and him first and every other thing be added. And so I'm saying for me, I never even gave myself the space to find out to uh, that I could own the beauty of who God created because I was so inundated by the thoughts and the pressures and what other people had to say about me. Mm-hmm. When I started to 
recognize that God had already declared so many things about me. And rather than looking external for all this affirmation that he had already given, I could settle into all these truths that he said about me in his word that I didn't have to go looking outwardly for. And so I really believe that we start to graduate and live outside of the jail cell of this bondage when we start to let him be sheriff, let him be the master and him be the major thing that we're trying to approve and appeal to. So, so this is something that you've dealt with personally. Ooh, yeah. This whole message of permission <laughs> is a story of my life. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's what they say. If you're going to write a book, write what you know, right? Uh, that part, that part. Um, the, the interesting thing about that is when you learn to live for that audience of one, a lot of things get easier, you know? Um, do it, like, you know, doing a, a daily live stream like this, it's a lot of work. Um, and if I was measuring it by, you know, the videos of the ones that get people stirred up politically or the, you know, or some, you know, animal, an otter swimming on its back waving, and it's getting millions of views, you know, you know if that's your, right. the measure, then it can get very, uh, depressing. You know, it's like, you wonder why am I doing this? But when you are doing something out of obedience, somebody I recently interviewed said, obedience is ours. The results are God's. When you're doing that, Whoa. and when you, and the other part that I love is, you know, all of heaven rejoices when one person comes to Christ. And you go, oh, okay, if I can point one person to Christ today, uh, and they come closer to Christ, then all of heaven rejoices. Who cares what the number is next to, you know, the various outlets that, that I'm on? And that for me changed a lot did did it really kind of change the way you minister when you started ministering out of obedience instead of out of performance i could not even give words or language to how my <laughs> understanding of what true success being what true success is changed everything for me <laughs> i was a perfectionist that wanted everything to be right and i was so focused on outcome but randy when i tell you i started reading in joshua one and it literally talks about how he tells us to meditate on his word day and night and live by this word don't deviate from it and he says and then you will be very successful and very prosperous i started to recognize that according to god success is obedience and mm -hmm. for so long, I thought oh, uh, success was when I got a certain outcome, a certain number of views, a certain measure of whatever. And he was like, sweetheart, did you do what I said? Because when you <laughs> know what I said, it leads to that all of heaven rejoicing because my metrics are not the world's by the world system and world standard because the world will uh, discount the one. I'll always see the one. And he shows mm. it in scripture. Mm. And so when we slow down for that one person, being able to make impact and effectiveness there, we are being much more like our father, which is the reason why we exist. <laughs> and I feel like so many of us miss that. It's not to build this big platform or have 100,000 views. It's to be like the Lord. Mm. And when we can do that, we're owning the true essence of who we've been created to be. You know, another thing that I like, and so tell us your middle name. My middle name is Avena Adansi. Which is from? My daddy's Ghanaian. He's from West Africa, Accra, Ghana. So he, and it means she who was born on Tuesday. She was born on Tuesday? Is that what you said? She who was born on Tuesday. Oh, mm -hmm. that, that is cool. Okay. So in, the, <laughs> a, in a world where we are so culturally divided and constantly pounded into our heads that we have to be culturally divided, when when we get closer to Christ, like the little spokes on a wheel, I, I, I'm i talking to you right now, and I feel a more of a closeness with you than I do a lot of people that would be, you know, Irish-American like I am or something. You know, I, I love how in Christ um, a lot of the world's divisions just melt away. Do you experience that? They go away. Yeah. They go away because it's so beautiful how when we are reconciled, that means brought together, mm. brought back. Like what was once broken or divided is bridged through his body, through what he did on Calvary. All of the things that once divided us, separated us, the reason he had to go literally become obsolete. He literally goes and steps over or reigns over these things that should cause us to look at each other and be on one side of the street. And he's saying, no, 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 no. All of us find yourself 
even at the, at the at the foot of this cross as brothers and sisters bound together by my blood i feel like it makes it dissipate and i see randy now as a brother who has the same dna the mm -hmm. same like-mindedness that i have and i see you as a brother rather than so one that is a, a different descent than I am. I believe we are the same descent. We're we are kingdom. Yeah. We're sons and daughters of the Father that have both been engrafted in. Yeah, and I think that's huge. I, I do I do too. And, it, and what you know what it does? It frees me to be able to celebrate your your ethnic background, your cultural background. I'd be like, tell me about Ghana. You know, make me some Ghana or whatever <laughs> Ghana means. Make me some food or something. You know, you get yeah. you get to enjoy the the variations of God's creation without the the divisions and stuff and i to me that is free all these people that are caught up in yeah. the strife and the well you you got to think like this and you got to think like this and you they're man they're in a prison and i would not want to be there so <laughs> and I was going to say, it says so, so much to me about their own brokenness and the inability mm. to own the beauty of who they are. Because what I have found is when you start to embrace you and the beauty of what the father has said about you uniquely, it makes you want to do the same thing for others. Mm. I would never want Randy to be boxed in when I know what that feels like. And so if him owning the fullness of how God made him and masterfulness, he's a master artisan and a master creator creator i would never want you to just own a part that makes me feel comfortable i would want you to own the beauty of what god made yeah, in fullness yeah. so that we all together come together to show the different beautiful expressions of the father because he's so big mm. and vast and magnanimous and i think of Walking in that freedom allows that to be seen in everyday life in the different various arenas he calls us to. Yeah, uh, man, so good. All right, this is the book, <laughs> Permission to Live Free by Dr. Jackie Green, available now wherever you get books. And, you know, one thing that when we talk about uh, living out of obedience uh, and for the audience of one, for the Lord, but also reaching, you know, one at a time, in essence, uh, with the gospel and with the encouragement um, it gives you uh, permission to say no to a lot of things and draw some boundaries because you're not trying to please people. And there's some freedom in that. And you talk about that in the book. Tell me what you found with uh, the ability to say no. Man, I believe this. And people don't always think about the power of no because they don't recognize the more you're able to say no, the more effectively you're able to say yes to the right thing. That's right. I can't tell you how long I feel like I delayed the things that the God was actually calling me into because I was giving all these yeses to things <laughs> that might have been good things, but not, may not have been purposeful for the thing or the season that I was currently in. And so I feel like it stretched me wide, but never let me go deep. Mm -hmm. And never allowed me to rise above other people's opinions. It didn't allow me to rise above the, the rejection or the trauma of, you know, my father leaving. It was so many things that caused me to want this affirmation or want this approval because of the things I had lived through. And as I found like, you know, some people are going to say no, but let's not focus so much on, you know, the things or the people that are not approving you, but the people that are and celebrating that it allowed me to just kind of own, I think, the beauty of who I was more and to go toward those yeses that God was asking me to rather than trying to make everybody be approved of me. Right. Okay. Right. That, that is exhausting. Uh, it's so exhausting. If you're exhausted because Talking you're- Talking about to, a prison. <laughs> right. You're exactly right. You know, you, you brought up something that is uh, very tough uh, for a, a lot of people, and that is we, we use the words him- uh, for God, we use the, okay. the word Father for God. Uh, and most of us, I don't know anybody's got a perfect father, but some people have <laughs> really terrible fathers. Some people have absent fathers. Some people don't know their fathers. Um, mm -hmm. how, how hard was it for you to not project the flaws of an earthly father onto a heavenly father and really get to know the perfect one that you could rely on that you won't be hurt by was that a journey so i think the thing that was interesting for me you know sometimes i believe that void births 
the beautiful uh, <laughs> landscape of something being bare and clear. My father actually went back to West Africa, Ghana, when I was only four. Mm. And so the absence of a father being present almost created, although I had a lot of trauma and it made me kind of like, my mother was a great mother in terms of like, you know, doting on us and giving her whole life and pouring into us. And so the mismatch of like, man, this person on this side loves me so well, but then I, it made me perform and strive really mm. hard to try to get my earthly father's approval. But I think because of the way in which I was brought up, but with my mom, I always kind of had like this clean slate with God. It was like, I recognize that although he has this uh, masculine trait, he's not human. And he could be more, and I think just through reading his word, he would say things like, I would love to just be, I would like to be Abba. I don't want to just be Lord or master. I want to have personal relationship with you. As I got to know him, I recognized that he could be what I had never experienced. So mm -hmm. I didn't really push off that he was going to leave me or that he was this bad person that, you know, didn't prioritize time with me. I only knew him as that. So it allowed me honestly to be healed or gain healing to be able to understand my own father's brokenness his love and beauty helped me with my own issues with my earthly father mm. rather than the reverse being an issue um it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me <laughs> wow uh, no and that that's grace god's grace and and, and that yeah and that's a beautiful thing uh you know my dad uh his his father was an alcoholic and absent a lot and abusive when he was around and those scars are deep you know uh but <laughs> He has said it so many times, you know, that when he found that perfect heavenly father, that that's where the, the, the healing and the wholeness can, can take place. Uh, boy, there's a lot of because things. So often, uh, Randy, mm -hmm. I was going to say so often we will go to someone that is valuable and made to feel expecting them to be able to bring about a healing that they've never experienced. Mm -hmm. I like to often say that hurt people hurt people the same way uh, heal people heal people or, or free people free people. Mm -hmm. My dad would never intentionally try to break me or hurt me. Yeah. He generally was only living out what he had experienced and recognizing that helped me to understand he could never give me the Thing that I needed only a God that it was perfect could and so I never I think it saved me years of having to continue to go to him trying to get trying to get from him something he can never give because he didn't have it you can't give what you don't have and so yeah. me getting God helped me to alleviate a pressure that he could for hold were you ever able to contact him as an adult my, my, me and my dad have a great relationship now. Okay, was able to take my children to see him, and he was at my wedding, and all of these things uh, happened because of me coming to know God and like recognizing, like, okay, he has limitations, just like I have limitations. I'm sorry that those were the limitations that birthed this perfectionism and striving in me, but I hope to be able to help him get to know the Father and him be able to grow in relationships so he could have healing. And that's exactly what happened. My daddy has a great relationship with God now. We have a beautiful relationship. And I've been able to see how that didn't get passed on to my children. Mm. Now my husband and I are together and they've had a whole marriage. And that, that I won't say, well, that curse mm. or that brokenness was the pass forward because of somebody standing up and not trying to make someone else that's valuable be a savior. They weren't made to be a savior. God was able to be a savior and he was able to be father. He's human and we get it as best as we know, you know? You know, I, I gosh, I love that. That is what freedom in Christ will do for you. It uh, will. And, and for others. And gosh, what a, what a powerful message. Um, it, it, Oh, okay. There's a lot. I guess if you want to really dive into this, you know, the book is a great resource for that. And so Permission to Live Free is available wherever you get books. This is not, I, I, I push books a lot on the program, but uh, as I said recently, it's, it's, it's a footnote, you know, it's, it's a place to go if you want to go deeper into something. Uh, the purpose mm -hmm. here is to, you know, encourage you and, and push you closer to the perfect Heavenly Father. Uh, and Jackie, when you because you, you speak on this a lot, whether through a podcast, through interviews like this, from the pulpit, uh, at events. What what do you see when people get this and start to actually move towards freedom? What do you see in their lives? I see change. Mm. One of the major mm. things that is a telltale sign for people that are not living in freedom is this paralyzed, stuck state of living. It's this lack of abundant life that 
God talks about. It's this life where the enemy has had his way, where he comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy, he comes to destroy their dreams, he comes to destroy their drive, he comes to steal this fervor and passion of living life to this fullness that God talks about. And when you have this freedom, I finally see this life of activation where they begin to, in faith, dare to go after this thing that they sense that the Father is calling them toward. You start to see this almost audaciousness to say, what else, God? I know that I still have breath. Is there something else that you want me to partner with you to do to be able to bring about your kingdom being advanced? I start to see people live where there are no, I won't say no more limits, but there are less limitations and less hesitation to go after all the more things that the Father has um, in front of them. I see activation come about as a, as a person gets free. If that's what you want, yeah, it's it's there. The promise is there. You you can't make an app on your own. God's already made a way for it to happen. It's just a matter of walking it out. Uh, I, you can check out Jackie's website, permission to live free book dot com. Find out about more about the ministry. Uh, but most of all, just take these words to heart and and open up and say, Lord, you know. Let let me be free. He's already given you permission. He's already made the promise. You can be. Everyone can be. Uh, but I think there is some responsibility on on our part. Um, and you just got to start today, every day. Jackie, what a encouraging message. Thank you for that. Mm. Um, anything you want to add before I let you go? Um, the one thing that I want to say to anybody watching or listening, rather. Um, if you feel like something in life came to knock you down, came to steal from you this freedom that you might have once experienced, maybe in a younger season or in a different time in life, and you feel as if you just kind of lost your thing, I want you to know that freedom is still available for you. I talk about these five things that come um, that will kind of steal, like feeling unsupported, people pleasing, trauma, um, comfortability, even settling for your previous successes can sometimes come uh, to take from you this freedom that you once experienced. I want you to recognize that with the father and partnering with him, taking per personal responsibility to do the therapy or to go back to getting in a small group and gaining Christ-like community, you can step over whatever like came to stifle you. I don't want you to feel like because you've had a setback, it has to be your end. There is new beginning for you because you're still alive and you're still here. So I just always want to give that push of hope for anybody that may feel hopeless. God is still present even today with what you've experienced and he would love nothing more than for you to come toward him to be able to walk you forward into a life of freedom. True words, believe it and receive it as they say and start today. Uh, again, Jackie, thank you. Appreciate you guys out there watching. If you want to encourage somebody, hit that share button right now. And if you haven't liked, follow, or subscribe, please do that. We'll bring you more encouragement. And come back. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. They want to live the way they want to live and have the Holy Spirit as a bit of uh, something extra. The Holy Spirit must be Lord.